In this presentation, fixation of a 3-2-B2 femoral shaft fracture will be demonstrated using the expert lateral femoral nail, or LFN. The objectives of this presentation are to show the features of the LFN and the correct entry point, the clinical indications and locking options, the pre-operative planning, the patient position, the surgical approach, the preparation of the medullary canal, the nail insertion and standard proximal locking, and implant removal. Recon locking is also shown as an option. The design of the LFN corresponds to the normal femoral anatomy and features a 10 degree lateral proximal bend, which facilitates both nail insertion and extraction, and allows a lateral entry point below the tip of the greater trochanter. The location of the entry point decreases the possibility of soft tissue damage to the abductor muscles and reduces the risk of a vascular necrosis of the femoral head. The final positioning of the nail within the medullary canal is determined by the location of the entry point, so the correct location of the entry point is critical. The entry point is located approximately one centimeter lateral to the tip of the greater trochanter. In the AP view, the entry point for the nail is approximately 10 degrees lateral to the axis of the medullary canal. In the lateral view, the entry point is in line with the axis of the medullary canal. The LFN comes with optimized locking implants that provide several options for proximal and distal locking. The two proximal locking options are standard and recon. The standard option can be used for most shaft fractures with the exception of subtrochanteric fractures. This option includes one screw from lateral to medial in either a primary static or dynamic mode for secondary controlled dynamization and one screw inserted obliquely from the greater to the lesser trochanter in primary static mode. The recon locking option is indicated for fractures of the femoral shaft in combination with fractures of the femoral neck as well as fractures in the subtrochanteric region. This option utilizes two screws inserted obliquely from lateral into the femoral neck and head. There are three possibilities for distal locking screws. Two options are lateral to medial, and one option is from anterolateral to posteromedial. This multiplanar configuration provides better stability and improves fixation in more distally located fractures and osteoporotic bone. Pre-operative planning is critical in order to determine the correct nail diameter and length. An AP and a lateral view of the uninjured femur must be obtained. To determine the nail diameter, the pre-operative planning template is placed over the lateral x-ray of the uninjured femur. The diameter of the medullary canal is measured at the narrowest part that will contain the nail. To determine the nail length, the template is placed over the AP x-ray of the uninjured femur. Based on the anatomy of the patient, the appropriate nail length is selected. The image intensifier is positioned to allow an AP and a lateral view of the femur. The tip of the radiographic ruler is placed level with the desired entry point and lateral to the tip of the greater trochanter. The image intensifier is then moved to the distal femur, and the ruler is positioned in the region of the knee. The length of the nail is read from the ruler at the desired level for the tip of the nail, which usually corresponds to the top of the patella, or can just be proximal to the epiphyseal scar. The radiographic ruler for nail diameters is placed perpendicular to the femur axis so that the round diameter gauge is located over the isthmus. The nail diameter is selected where the medullary canal to cortex transition is still visible on both sides of the gauge. In a clinical case, two or three distal locking screws and two proximal locking screws would be used for this fracture. In this practical exercise, only the two proximal screws will be inserted. The patient is positioned supine on either a fracture table or a radiolucent operating table. It is very important that the image intensifier is positioned to allow visualization of the proximal femur, the fracture, and the distal femur in both AP and lateral planes without any obstruction. As an alternative, the patient can be positioned supine with the injured leg adducted 
or in the lateral decupitus position. In this exercise, the bone model is clamped in place to simulate the supine position. The 3.2mm guide wire is secured in the universal chuck with T-handle. With a lateral inclination of 10 degrees in the AP plane, the guide wire is inserted approximately 15 to 20 centimetres into the medullary canal. The guide wire should be aimed at a point 2 to 3 centimetres below the lesser trochanter. The direction can be followed by looking through the hole in the bone model. The guide wire should not penetrate the medial cortex of the femur. In the lateral view, the image intensifier is used to verify that the position of the guide wire is straight and centered within the medullary canal. After the position of the guide wire has been verified, the universal chuck is removed. To prevent damage to the soft tissue during the reaming process, the drill sleeve and the protection sleeve is passed over the guide wire through the incision down to the bone. The drill sleeve is unscrewed and removed. The flexible cannulated drill bit is connected to the DHS quick coupling. The drill bit is then slid over the guide wire and through the protection sleeve to the bone. The protection sleeve is essential for this part of the procedure, but in this exercise it is withdrawn to allow a better view. Drilling is begun. While drilling, the drill bit is continuously moved back and forth to clear the debris from the medullary canal and to avoid jamming as the drill bit is advanced. Image intensifier control is used to avoid any unintended contact with the medial cortex. If it appears that the medial cortex will be impacted, the guide wire should be repositioned. The medullary canal is drilled until the stop on the drill bit reaches the protection sleeve. The drill bit the protection sleeve and the guide wire are removed. To accommodate the nail, the medullary canal is now enlarged to the required diameter with the medullary reamer. The synream reaming rod with an olive at its end is carefully inserted into the medullary canal using the universal chuck with T-handle. While rotating the rod back and forth, the rod is eased across the fracture under image intensifier control. The reaming rod must come to rest centrally above the notch to prevent a virus or valgus deformity. Care should be taken that the rod in the lateral view is also placed in the centre of the canal to avoid perforation of the anterior cortex. The correct position of the reaming rod in the distal femur is checked in both planes with the image intensifier. The universal chuck is now removed. The reaming instruments consist of a flexible shaft and a set of reamer heads. These reamer heads have diameters from 8.5 up to 12 mm in 0.5 mm increments. Since a 10 mm diameter nail will be used in this exercise and the medullary canal is normally reamed 1 mm greater than the diameter of the nail, the medullary canal will be reamed to a diameter of 11 mm. Reaming begins with the 8.5 mm reamer head. The reamer head is attached to the flexible shaft. The compact air drive with the attachment for medullary reaming is now employed. By pulling back the ring on the quick coupling, the attachment is opened. The flexible shaft can now be inserted. The reaming assembly is guided over the reaming rod. During the reaming process, the reaming rod is held precisely in the axis of the femoral shaft by the assistant, using the holding forceps to prevent the rod from rotating and the reamer from jamming. The reamer is pushed into the opening of the medullary canal without rotation or under power. In clinical practice, the tissue protector is used during the entire reaming process. The reamer is used at the highest drive speed with slight and steady pressure, moving the drive back and forth. This movement frees the reamer from bone material and prevents the reamer head from jamming against the reaming rod. After the entire length of the medullary canal has been reamed, the reamer is withdrawn without bending the rod until the reamer head is completely visible. The reaming rod must be held in position by the assistant with the holding forceps to prevent it from being pulled out with the reamer when the reamer is removed. To remove the reamer head, it is inserted into the slot of the removal box for reamers and the flexible shaft is pulled back. Reaming is continued in 0.5mm increments until the desired diameter is obtained.
usually one millimeter greater than the diameter of the nail to be used. In this exercise, a 10 millimeter nail is used, so the medullary canal should be reamed to a diameter of 11 millimeters. It may be useful to tap out any bone debris from the plastic model before starting the next step. The appropriate nail, insertion handle and connecting screw are selected. The insertion handle is oriented lateral to the nail, the connecting screw is slid through the insertion handle and the tongue of the handle is slid into the groove of the nail. The connecting screw is threaded into the nail using the screwdriver with spherical head. The screw is fully inserted but should not be over tightened. The nail is slid over the reaming rod and inserted into the medullary canal with the insertion handle. It is important that the insertion handle is oriented anteriorly. As the nail is inserted, it rotates approximately 90 degrees from anterior to lateral to align anatomically with the femoral canal. The passage of the nail across the fracture is controlled in both planes to avoid malalignment. With hard bone, it may be necessary to advance the nail with gentle hammer blows. However, the insertion handle should not be struck directly. Instead, the connector is used. The connector is slid into the medial grooves on the insertion handle and secured in place. The slot nearest to the nail should be used so that the driving head lies parallel to the nail. The head of the combined hammer is locked in place by tightening the nut onto the threads located below the hammerhead. The connector is struck with gentle hammer blows. The nail is inserted until it is level with or just below the femoral opening. The final position of the nail is confirmed in the AP and lateral views. After the nail has been inserted, the connector is removed along with the reaming rod. To check the proximal nail position, the aiming arm is attached to the insertion handle. A guide wire is then inserted to the bone through the hole marked nail end. The tip of the guide wire indicates the exact proximal position of the nail. The 5mm distance between the markings on the insertion handle corresponds to the extensions of the end caps. The final nail position must be verified under image intensification in the AP and lateral views. To adjust the depth of the nail, the connector is reapplied and with gentle hammer blows the nail is further inserted until the required depth is reached. The connector is then removed. A stab incision is made down to the bone and the three-part trocar combination is inserted through the green color-coded hole in the aiming arm labeled STAT. The trocar is removed. The 4.2 mm calibrated drill bit is used to drill through both cortices until the tip of the drill bit just penetrates the far cortex. The position of the drill bit is confirmed with the image intensifier. With the drill sleeve pressed firmly to the lateral cortex, the screw length is read from the calibrated drill bit. The drill bit and the drill sleeve are removed. The screw length can also be determined with the depth gauge. To do this, the sleeve must be removed. The depth gauge is inserted through the protection sleeve and the screw length is read off the scale. The appropriate 5mm locking screw is inserted through the protection sleeve with the star drive screwdriver. The tip of the locking screw should not project more than 2mm beyond the far cortex. The position of the locking screw is verified with the image intensifier. The protection sleeve is removed. The second screw is inserted in the same manner as the first using the hole in the insertion handle labelled 120. 
The tip of the locking screw should not project more than 2 mm beyond the far cortex. The position of the locking screws is verified with the image intensifier. The insertion handle and the aiming arm are removed together by loosening the connecting screw using the screwdriver with spherical head. A cannulated end cap can be inserted to prevent bone ingrowth or to extend the length of a nail that has been over inserted. The end cap is first turned anti clockwise until its thread aligns with the thread of the nail. The end cap is then screwed into the nail with clockwise turns of the screwdriver. In clinical practice, implant removal is an optional procedure. After clearing away any tissue ingrowth, the end cap is removed with the star drive screwdriver. The locking screws are removed with the star drive screwdriver. The holding sleeve is slid over the screwdriver shaft and secured in place by compressing the spring-loaded outer sleeve. To begin with, only one of the locking screws is removed. The screwdriver is applied and after a couple of turns, the screw head is grasped by pushing the holding sleeve over the head of the screw. It is secured by turning the inner sleeve anti-clockwise. The screw can now easily be removed. The second proximal locking screw should be left in place to prevent rotation or displacement of the nail while the extraction screw is attached to the nail and tightened. The hammer guide is attached to the extraction screw. The remaining proximal locking screw is removed. The head of the combined hammer is released by loosening the nut. The combined hammer is mounted on the hammer guide and the nail is extracted with gentle hammer blows. The LFN will rotate approximately 90 degrees from lateral to anterior as the proximal third is extracted. For the recon option, the nail has already been inserted and the aiming device has been mounted. Two guide wires are placed on the slots of the aiming device to check the depth of the nail insertion so that two hip screws can be inserted within the femoral neck. The distal wire should be near the inferior cortex of the femoral neck or there would be no room for the proximal hip screw. If the depth of the nail needs to be adjusted, the connector is reapplied and the nail is advanced with gentle hammer blows until the required depth is reached. The connector is then removed. The flexible clip-on is pressed down. A three-part trocar combination is inserted through both yellow colour-coded holes in the aiming arm labelled Recon and advanced to the bone through stab incisions. Releasing the clip-on holds the trocar combination in place. The cranial trocar is removed. A 3.2mm guide wire is inserted through the drill sleeve and the tip of the guide wire is advanced to the level of the subchondral bone. In a clinical situation, the depth and antiversion are checked under image intensification in the AP and lateral views. The caudal trocar is removed. A second 3.2mm guide wire is inserted. The drill sleeve is removed and the length of the guide wire outside of the bone is measured with the direct measuring device. Be sure that the tip of the protection sleeve touches the bone or the measurement will be inaccurate. In this exercise, the length of the cord or hip screw is 100 millimeters. To set the measured length for the screw on the 4.5-6.5 mm reamer, the fixation sleeve is fixed in the corresponding position. The length must be read off the side that points towards the tip of the reamer. The guide wire is removed. The reamer is guided through the protection sleeve to the bone and drilled to the stop on the reamer. In the clinic, the position of the reamer is verified in the AP view. The fixation sleeve prevents further drilling.
The reamer is removed. The appropriate hip screw is inserted with the star drive screwdriver. The groove on the screwdriver indicates when the screw is fully inserted. The position of the screw is verified in the AP and lateral views. The same procedure is followed for the cranial screw. This time a 105mm long hip screw is used. The protection sleeves are removed. The connecting screw is loosened and the insertion handle and the aiming arm are removed. To insert an end cap, the T40 screwdriver and a guide wire are used. The guide wire assists in centering the end cap in the nail. The end cap is slid over the wire and onto the screwdriver. To minimize the chance of cross threading, the end cap is turned anti clockwise until the thread of the end cap aligns with that of the nail. Then the end cap is turned clockwise to thread it into the nail. The screwdriver and the guide wire are removed. This presentation has shown the features of the LFN and the correct entry point, the clinical indications and locking options, the pre-operative planning, the patient position, the surgical approach, the preparation of the medullary canal, the nail insertion and standard proximal locking, and implant removal. Recon locking has also been shown as an option.